Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today in this video I'll talk about the properties of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So in my last video I told the geometrical interpretation of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So now in this video before we go to the computations of these values and vectors we will see what are the properties right. So just a recap. So we had seen that what were eigenvalues and eigenvectors mathematically that whenever we have a matrix A and we multiply it with a vector column vector X and we get back lambda times X and lambda is called the eigenvalue and X is called the eigenvector, right? So we are interested pretty much in calculating this value of X and the value of lambda. So let's see the properties. The first property says that a square matrix A and its transpose, they have the same eigenvalues. So in the next video, you will see how to compute them. So you get an idea that if we have a matrix A and we, if we have a transpose of that matrix, both the matrices will have the same eigenvalues. So in case if you know the eigenvalues of this matrix A, the eigenvalues of the transpose matrix will be same as the matrix. Then the second property says the eigenvalues of a diagonal or a triangular matrix are its diagonal elements. So this is very simple. So if you have a diagonal matrix, diagonal means when we have entries only on the diagonals. That means the matrix is like this. So all the non-diagonals, they are zero and we have elements only on the diagonals. So all these diagonal elements, that means in this case, all ABCs, they are the eigenvalues for a diagonal matrix, right? So when we say it's a triangular matrix, it can be an upper triangular or a lower triangular as the case is. So in those cases also, the diagonal elements will represent the eigenvalues. Now the third property, any n cross n matrix is invertible if and only if it does not have zero as its eigenvalue, right? So this is a very, very important property. So any matrix, we say that a matrix is invertible whenever that means A inverse exists only when the determinant of A is not equal to zero, right? So now what is this that, what is the relationship of this invertibility with the diagonal eigenvalues? So when the eigenvalues are all non-zero, right? All the eigenvalues of the particular matrix, they are all non-zero values, then the matrix will be invertible. In case you get one of the eigenvalues as zero, then the determinant of that matrix will become zero and you will not be able to calculate its inverse, right? Okay. <coughs> Let's move to the next properties. The next property, the fifth, uh, the fourth property, if a matrix A has eigenvalues lambda with corresponding eigenvector x, then for any k equal to one, two, three, so on, A raised to power k has eigenvalue lambda raised to power k. So, that means if any matrix A has eigenvalue lambda, then any power of that matrix will have eigenvalue corresponding to lambda raised to power K. The fifth property. If A is an invertible matrix with eigenvalue lambda corresponding to the eigenvector X, then A inverse also has eigenvalue lambda inverse corresponding to the eigenvector X. So that means if A has one of the eigenvalues as lambda, then the inverse matrix will also have eigenvalue same as 1 by lambda. Just invert the eigenvalue, right? Okay. Then the next property. <coughs> the sum of the eigenvalues of a matrix is always equal to the trace of the matrix. So what is trace? Trace is the sum of the diagonal elements. So the sum of the eigenvalues of any matrix is always equal to the trace of the matrix. Likewise, the next property is the product of the eigenvalues is equal to the determinant of the matrix. So this is the reason why when we were doing the property that a matrix is invertible if none of its eigenvalues are equal to zero. So what will happen if one of the eigenvalues become equal to zero, the product will automatically become zero. If the product is zero, the determinant is zero. And if the determinant is zero, then it is called a singular matrix. So it will not have an inverse, right? And then the next property and a very important property, if lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n are the eigenvalues of A, then the eigenvalues of Ka, that means 
you are multiplying the matrix A with the scalar quantity. So what will happen to the eigenvalues? The eigenvalues will also get multiplied with the same scalar. Similarly, what are the eigenvalues of powers of A? This we are just done. It will be lambda 1 to the power same, lambda 1 to the power m, lambda 2 to the power m, and so on. And similarly, what are the eigenvalues of A inverse of the inverse matrix? You will just invert the eigenvalues. It will be 1 by lambda 1, 1 by lambda 2, and so on. Right? So these are the some of the properties of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which are normally asked in the exams and even in the question boards, right? So in my next video, I'll focus on the calculations of these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So thank you so much. And those of you who have liked the video, do hit the like button. And those of you who have not subscribed my channel, do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video. And do share the videos with the ones who want them, who want to study, and believe in yourself and you will succeed. Thank you.